In part one of this video, we took a step back and we looked at how important exercise was and why I feel you need it in every day of your life. If you haven't seen this video already, then I will put a link to it up here where I do recommend you watch part one because part one and now today part two are very important because they'll lead into part three where we can come together and make the ultimate guide on how you can be a healthy geek. So before we get on with my diet and what I eat every day, it's important to note that there are some correlations that have been happening over the last 100 years at the very least, and they are correlations that are heading towards us not living a healthy life. The first one being sugar. In the 1700s, the average daily intake was under five grams. Fast forward now, post 2000 era, we are intaking on average over 270 grams of sugar per day. That is over 45 times the increased consumption. Of course, intaking too much sugar can lead to things like diabetes and other health problems, but it can also, and this is the biggest problem in my opinion, create an addiction. However, some could argue it's a dependency, but it's been shown that every time you intake in certain individuals, it can release dopamine. And just like certain drugs, this then in time can be an addictive habit that you develop a resistance to. Hence, the next time you eat more sugar and sweets, you take more of a hit to get the same feeling that you previously had. So if you are guilty of drinking soda, drinking cola, and drinking too much soft drink, and eating too much junk food, then you need to stop. Things like syrups as well, they are packed with sugar. And not only that, they're packed with the next cardinal sin, and that is trans fats. Trans fats are essentially hydrogenated oil that's then hardened, and in turn, it's harder for your body to digest this. And it's packed in a lot of foods. It was notorious for being packed in previous fast food outlets. However, they have since changed their tune and are now putting in more healthier options, which is good to a point. But of course, eating deep fried food is not always a good option. It will load your body with a lot of other malnutrition food. But ladies and gentlemen, before we move on with my diet and my choices of food, if you can do me one favor, well actually two favors, and that is cut back on the sugar and also cut back on the trans fats. So less processed and junk food, less drinking soda, less drinking sweet drinks, and try to drink water and a lot more cup of tea. Every time you see me on the channel here, I'm drinking a cup of tea, and I don't put any additional sugar into that. I put a little bit of milk in there, and I'm good to go. Basically, I want you guys to develop a liking to having a bitter tongue rather than a sweet tongue, because that's gonna mean you have energy for a longer amount of time, you're able to work longer, you're then able to exercise better, and more importantly, your mind is then able to function in a more regulated manner. So from here on in, I wake up in the morning and I'll usually have a light breakfast. This will usually consist of a fruit smoothie. I'll be whacking anything from beetroot to carrots to kale to apples to banana to various other ingredients that are just in the fridge and I'm at the supermarket, they're on special. Those vegetables and fruits, whack them all together, chuck them in a smoothie, get yourself a good blender and you're gonna be definitely having one of the best breakfasts available. Now, another thing at breakfast, sometimes I like to drink coffee, especially if I've got a big workload on. So if I do drink coffee, I'll always only drink it in the morning because for me personally, after lunchtime, I find it does affect my sleep. Sometimes it can get to the stage where if I take it too late in the day, it'll uh, have my heart just beating, beating, beating when I'm trying to go to sleep. So for breakfast, try to eat a light meal in my opinion. Fruit or veg is the best option. Of course, if you're in a hurry, you may just wanna grab something quick. I usually have a few muesli bars sitting in the cupboard and also a banana. This is like my super lazy, no time to even put a blending uh, breakfast together. And of course, the other option I've got is if I've got a bit of time in the morning, I'll cook up some porridge and have that with banana. So they're my three choices for breakfast that I eat personally. And now here we're gonna move over to lunchtime because this is an important one. This is, I feel, is the most important meal of your day, uh, lunch, because it gives you the energy for the rest of the day. If you eat crap food at this time of the day, I feel like you start coming down around four or five o'clock, get very tired, lack of energy. But if you eat a good meal, and if you do eat fast food, I try to eat things like sushi, uh, burritos, and rarely will I have an indulge in something like KFC. If I do go to KFC, I usually get myself an ultimate box. They do taste very good, but if I do eat that KFC, 
I don't get myself a soft drink, as I said in the intro, I get myself something like a water or an orange juice because they're much healthier for you. And we're gonna stop here and talk a little bit more about lunch because as we said before, most important part of your day, most important meal, if you can always try to cook yourself a good lunch, you can have last night's dinner if that was healthy, uh, try to eat maybe a whole meal sandwich. I personally love, and the majority of the time if I'm out and about and I don't have time to make lunch, I'll eat uh, salmon and avocado sushi. They've also down the road, they've got some really healthy options like tuna, California rolls. These are all good. But if I have a bit of time, I will make myself a sandwich with a bit of ham, lettuce, and hummus dip on there. Sometimes even going as far to cook myself up a chicken stir fry or a chicken schnitzel and salad. Same meals that I'd have for dinner, but they're packed with healthy ingredients. They're not gonna weigh me down and they're not gonna be too heavy. However, before we move on to dinner, I would not recommend eating something for lunch like a pizza. This will really weigh you down, leave you so thirsty for water, high salt intake, all that stuff that you don't need to get the rest of the day productive. And now finally, ladies and gentlemen, we are moving up towards dinner. But in between, if you do get a little bit hungry, there's some great snacks that I have throughout my day. I usually had, as I said before, in the cupboard, muesli bars, bananas on hand. These are healthy snacks that everyone should have in their cupboard or in their fruit bowl. Apples as well, fantastic. I usually have a lot of these on hand at any given time. I also drink a lot of water and tea throughout the day. So don't be afraid if you're a little bit hungry and you sort of want to delay your lunch time till 12 or 1 p.m., then don't be afraid to have little snacks throughout the day. But do keep them healthy. Don't go off all the time eating things like chocolate bars, but if you do eat chocolate bars, try to keep them dark chocolate. And here we are now at the final meal of the day. This is dinner time. You're getting hungry, you've most likely gone to the gym, and now if you do go to the gym, I usually like to go uh, at least the evening or sometimes even really late at night, like 1 a.m., but if you do find yourself hungry, go do a workout first, eat some little snack before you go, and then when you get home, you can make yourself up a nice, rich protein meal. For me personally, this is the time when I eat my steaks, eat my porks, I eat my chicken, it's usually got a bit of meat packed in, but it would be packed in with vegetables and salad. Usually vegetables, fine, like even things like potato chips are fine here. I like to eat a lot of things like pumpkin, carrot, cauliflower, beans. These are some really good sides to couple in with your main dish, just to make a nice meal that'll keep you full, and then you can go to bed, sleep really well, because hopefully by this stage, you've followed part one of this tutorial. So you're now exercising, you're now eating right, and you're ready for the conclusion of this video and also the lead up to part three. But before we get on with anything else, I know people are gonna ask me about my skincare. Sometimes I get told that I look 25, even though I'm 32 years old. So let's take a look at what I use and what I have been using for quite a few years now. This is my moisturizer. I get this off iHerb.com. It's called a She Moisture and it's uh, essentially baby lotion, but I find it works so well. It really moisturizes my skin, leaves it feeling really good, especially in winter when it's really dry and itchy. Uh, also, here's the other finishing touch. I don't use this every night, but I do use this after I moisturize. And this is jojoba oil. I like to put in some vitamin E oil as well as vitamin C oil inside this mix and then just drop it on my skin before I go to bed. Leaves the final product looking really nice, really polished. So sometimes you'll see me go to these events, you'll hear stories about the yes, uh, you know, having a bit of fun with the ladies. And that's because they see the product and they say, hey, I can overclock this thing. I can get great performance gains out of it. So I wanna share these same secrets with you guys. Uh, but also if you're in the shower and you need something to clean your face, clean your skin off, this is what I use, even though I haven't got any pimples on my face. Uh, it's called Acne Dote. And uh, it's really good. I find this cleanser really cleans out uh, all your pores so you can then put on the moisturizer and then on the jojoba oil. But I don't use this every day. I only use this uh, once every two or three days. So just depends. You be the judge on what feels best for you. I like to be the judge on what feels best for me. Now for supplements, a lot of people out there take different supplements because they may be deficient in a certain thing. Me personally, I only have two supplements that I take and that is cod liver oil and also chelated magnesium because I believe about 75% of human beings post 2000 era are deficient in magnesium and you want to get the good stuff which is the chelated stuff because your body absorbs it much better than the cheap stuff. 
This will help with your muscles and you'll stop getting cramps. Uh, at least this is what I personally found. I no longer get cramps in my muscles and really weird pains. And especially when I sleep sometimes before I took magnesium, I'd wake up with a really sore neck. That no longer happens anymore. And here we are now at conclusion time. The most important thing to come out of today's video is cut down on your sugar if you haven't already, and also cut down on processed foods, which generally contain a lot of sugar and trans fats. These two are your biggest enemy in 2018, going on to 2019 and 2020. It doesn't matter. This is a trend that's been happening. You've got to see it, you've got to identify it, and you've got to eliminate it out of your diet and then that will help you in turn have more energy to exercise. And then exercising will in turn make you feel better. So it's all a process that's interconnected. That's why I'm making a three part series and the first two are really important for part three, which is coming soon. Hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. And don't forget to smash that like button, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.